One of the great things about capturing video on a Canon DSLR is that it's a lot easier than you think. Canon cameras have a special movie mode dedicated only to capturing video, and it takes all of the guesswork out of shooting video, making it really fun and easy. Now, before I show you how to actually record video on your camera, I want to first make sure that you're using the right SD card. For video, you'll need to use a card that's class 6 or better. That way you know it's fast enough to keep up with moving images. You can find the class number on the front of the SD card inside what is almost a complete circle. It looks like a circle with a little piece missing. Now let's talk about the actual settings on your camera that you'll use to capture video. These are called movie settings. I'll show you the settings for the T5i, and some of the other Canon DSLR cameras are set up the same way. So even if your camera is not set up exactly like mine, the settings to look for should be very close to what I'm about to show you. First, you need to put the camera in movie mode. To do this, look for a little movie camera icon on the top of the camera body. Sometimes it's on the mode dial, that's the top dial with letters like P, T, V, A, and M. But on the T5i, it's actually above the word ON on the power switch. The easiest way to make sure you capture clear, focused video is to set the mode dial to AUTO. In AUTO mode, the camera will automatically choose the correct autofocus setting. Set the white balance and make sure all of your exposure settings are correct for your shooting situation. The only thing that you may have to do is check your lens for a focus switch. That's the small switch that looks like this. It says MF slash AF. AF stands for autofocus, and that's what you want to set it to. Also, if you see a switch that says stabilizer on the lens, like there is on this 18 to 135 millimeter, make sure that's turned on too. Now that's for image stabilization, a feature that'll smooth out your video. A lot of times when we shoot while holding the camera as opposed to using a tripod, the video can come out a bit shaky. You've seen the home video footage that's hard to watch because everything seems really jerky. Well, IS, or image stabilization, will work to make that shake less noticeable. Next, look for the button with the red dot next to it. That's the record button, and if you push it, the camera will start and stop recording. So to review, put the camera in movie mode, make sure that your lens is set to AF or autofocus, and if you have an image stabilization switch, turn that on. When it comes to the movie settings in your menus, there are three really important ones to remember. Resolution, frame rate, and autofocus, or AF mode. Let's go over what those are. On most Canon DSLRs, you'll find three video resolution options. 1920 by 1080, which is full HD, 1280 by 720, which is standard HD, and 640 by 480, which is standard definition. Well, the best way to choose which is right for you is to think about where you want to show your video. Since many new computers, TV monitors, and even mobile devices have screens with a resolution size of 1920 by 1080, I would encourage you to choose that one. It means that no matter where you view the video, it'll always look the best it possibly can with crisp details. The lower resolutions may not look as good. On the T5i and other Canon cameras, you'll see a number next to the resolution with two half squares around it. Now that's your frame rate. Frame rate is important for capturing moving subjects. 30 frames per second is perfect for capturing most everyday moments. If you're shooting a family get-together or some vacation video, this is a great frame rate to work with. 60 frames per second is best for high action events like sports. If the kids are outside playing a game of soccer or riding bikes, set your frame rate to 60 frames per second to keep up with the action. There's also a frame rate of 24 frames per second, and that's great for capturing video of an emotional moment. 24 frames per second is the speed that film is shot at, so your video will have a cinema-like feel to it that you're used to seeing on the big screen. Finally, you want to make sure your AF mode is set to movie servo mode. Now, if you've already put the top dial in auto, the camera will do it for you. But if you're working in one of the other modes, you want to make sure that you're set to movie servo mode. Canon has an outstanding autofocus system, and if you're shooting anything that's moving, Movie servo mode will lock the focus on that moving subject and stay focused, no matter where it goes in your frame. When it comes to video, autofocus is essential. DSLRs are notoriously bad at holding focus on a moving subject, but Canon's Movie Servo AF allows continuous autofocus tracking, delivering remarkable speed and reliability. Then just hit record. It's that simple. 
Now here's a quick tip. Set your shot up before you actually hit that record button. Find your angle first and make sure that the light illuminates your subject. Check your LCD and make sure that the shot looks exactly like you want it to. The record button should be the very last thing that you press. No other adjustments should be made while you're recording. Now, if you follow this advice, you'll capture well-framed, clean shots that are easy to work with later when you're trying to edit them together. Once you get comfortable with the auto setting and movie mode, you can explore some of the other mode options on the camera. Try program mode. That'll allow you to control the overall brightness or ISO of your image, but all the other camera settings are adjusted automatically. You may have purchased your DSLR bundled with an SDM lens, and that's great. These lenses have what's called stepping motors in them. Those motors work with Movie Servo AF, allowing smooth and quiet, continuous autofocus. When you use the autofocus on a non-STM lens, you can actually hear the lens adjusting for focus, and it's often a very jerky process. Well, that's no good for capturing smooth, continuous video. STM lenses are made for video, keeping the autofocus continuous and quiet. Now, may I suggest a piece of gear that'll make shooting video with your DSLR even easier? A tripod is a great investment. It doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to have a head designed to allow you to follow a moving subject. This is called a fluid head. A tripod stabilizes the camera, making it easy to capture shake-free video and follow a subject with one continuous smooth movement. If you use a fluid head tripod, then you can add some great movement to your shots as well. You can follow a subject smoothly as they walk from one end of a room to another. That's called a pan. A pan is when you move the camera horizontally back and forth parallel with the horizon. You can also add a tilt, which is when you start with the camera pointed up or down and then tilt it vertically in the opposite direction. Now here's an example. If you want to capture two children playing a game on the floor, you want to start with your camera pointed down at them. But then you might notice that Grandpa is standing over them smiling. Now that's when you can vertically tilt the camera up to get Grandpa's face in one continuous video clip. And one of the best things you can do is practice. If you have a zoom lens, make sure that you take it out and shoot with it before the big day. The more you work with it, the more comfortable you'll feel with what your video will look like at different zoom lengths. The same goes for your tripod. The more you practice with the equipment, the more familiar you'll get with it and your pans and tilts will start to get smoother and steadier. Now you should have a clear understanding of the basic settings, controls, and gear needed to capture great video. Understanding how your camera and lenses work puts you well on your way to making your own HD movies. There are a few more easy tips that pros use all the time to help capture well-composed and meaningful video clips. In the next video, we'll go over how to prepare for and actually capture your first movie.